The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's time for the Guillotine Grapevine, a podcast for the land of 10,000 wrestlers. 10,000 wrestlers. Now, here's your host, award-winning wrestling broadcast journalist, Jason Bryant. Minnesota Storm Time here on the Guillotine Grapevine, joined by Joe Rao, dual style specialist. What's going on? Donnie Long and Knight, White Bear Native and Greco Heavyweight. Hey. Zach Sanders, our resident Dennis the Menace. Shaka, bruh. <laughs> and the other Pat Smith, Pride of Chaska. The other one. Well, okay, this is the other Pride of Chaska. <laughs> we are doing a, a roundtable wrestling discussion here. In the shadows of Hennepin Avenue, in a house Jay Robinson probably owns. Um, <laughs> yes, no? He owns You it. own this house. Oh, All right. Yeah, so you're talking that's to a grown up. Landlord. Landlord. Did you buy it from Jay? That's no, okay. The landlord. <laughs> However, Marty Jay was does, my realtor, though. Jay t- <laughs> hey, Marty was a realtor. Marty asked to be my realtor when I moved into town, too. But, uh, I He's a good the, realtor. He's a really with, good realtor. with friend Morgan of Minnesota Wrestling, Joe Bush, and Pete Nett. To, uh, I think they've both advertised in the guillotine at some point or another. Little little plug there for the, the guillotine ad. So today, we actually, uh, let me set the stage for you. We have, uh, we're outside. It's a beautiful Minnesota day, Minnesota summer day. It's uh, actually the two-year anniversary of the day I quit chewing, so I'm happy about that. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. I got more tweets than my DeSabato tweet. Well, we won't go there. <laughs> then we've got uh, we got a round tip. So Pat sends me a question last week about dual styles, and it got me thinking. I was like, man, I need to just come over to the house, and we just put the microphones up and have a, have a wrestling discussion. So this is what we've got, and there is a, it's going to be a potluck plethora of storm insight from your – the athletes you support here in Minnesota, we got uh, three Minnesota natives and two imports. Mm-hmm. So, and, and Joe's actually, he's just had his jaw unwired, right? Yep. You can speak again. Yeah, I can speak again. I still got this little piece of metal in, going into my cheek, though. So that this podcast sucks. would have been a lot more fun if Joe couldn't <laughs> die. I would talk like this. Poor guy. I want to stand up. I, I bought like a dry erase board and some piece, like jumbo pieces of paper. Joe, oh, talk, talk into the mic. Talk, so into the mic. Kind of, talk into the microphone. You can tilt your uh, head this okay. way. Like, uh, tilt, tilt your head slightly that way. I like to look at the audience. <laughs> I was looking at what, you. What, the pile of creeping <laughs> Charlie over here is going to that I was looking at you. <laughs> I actually told Pat how to get rid of that earlier. I looked it up on the HGTV network. Yeah, those which, weeds. Yeah, well, not he actually those volunteered weeds. to come over and do it himself. Oh, so. I did not, but I have been spending a lot of time at Home Depot. So, oh. for those who don't know, Joe's been uh, on the show before. He is a Illinois native. Division three national champion, one of two at this table that are Division three national champs. So. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hey, how, do you, how do you not know that? <laughs> no, I knew, <laughs> I knew that. Hey, I we, know. Know. we just don't talk about it. We just don't talk about it. <laughs> Us D3 guys don't talk about it. It's, it's a hard time in our lives. <laughs> yeah, we don't like yeah, to brag. Yeah, at the top of the podium, real hard time. You're talking to a guy who didn't start for his high school team. Well, Piss off. We so right. anyway, this is starting off on a real good note. So, uh, Joe, I, there's one story I do want to ask you about Rochester real quick, and it is before we get into details of the topics, you, you just got to tell me about you and Pat Downey serenading one another to Crimson and Clover while you're wrestling yeah you know I, <laughs> like during I, the match during the match you know i was losing so i probably shouldn't have done this but uh i love that song i really <laughs> i like that song a lot and you and you put it on it's like one of me and my dad's favorites and he said to me to, to my, to my, it was chris moen who put it on i don't do the music at the events okay, i just yeah. i just talk about i thought it. you put it on but uh i wish i did now but, but we it was a weird moment where you know when you're wrestling you're usually not listening to what you can't hear anybody talking or anything but we both at the same time could hear that song playing. And then he, he like said, man, this is a great song. I'm like, yeah, I love this song. As we were wrestling, and then we, I started singing it to him. And then we started singing it together. <laughs> this, is like, <laughs> this is like birth for the national team, like yeah, on the line here. Yeah, national know? team. You know, but, I mean, it was freestyle for me. I was kind of going there for fun anyways. But in retrospect, I should have uh, not done that. Maybe uh, I would have won that match. <laughs> but but I was down big, so I thought, why not have fun, you know? Well, that's one thing. When, when wrestling a guy like that who's just... You just want to relax him enough so you can kind of sneak attack him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got some sick stuff if he wants to. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's got to be a fun guy to wrestle. Yeah, he's definitely fun to wrestle. In the first match we had, 
I beat him, and it was kind of a boring match, though, because it just like he tried to throw, and he's not going to throw me. Um, I'm just better. Yeah, at, the Illinois two on one. Yeah, you know, I'm better at underhooks <laughs> and two on ones than him. He's not going to throw me, so it ended up being kind of a boring match. But I dominated the first match. In the second match, he opened it up. He scored a leg attack on me, and I was down big. So I was just like, you know, whatever. Let's let's go. And to be honest, the way they made the trials this year in Final X, I wouldn't have been able to wrestle for national team anyways. I'm a, I was, you know, the main goal is Greco, so I wouldn't have gone to that anyways. So you wouldn't have tried to pull the coon. I, I probably would have tried to pull the coon if Greco was done. And, I, you know, once Greco was done, I might have tried to. But going into Greco, I wouldn't have tried to do both. You know, it's just, I don't know. I hear it. Donnie, Donnie's not going to talk a whole lot. He's still recovering. <laughs> Donnie doesn't but, like um, talking. <laughs> he's, he's, got a, he's got a cane here, like uh, like big pimpin' walking down the street. I don't want to mess with him with that. But, uh, it's big, actually big a sword. Daddy. It's a sword. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's like... I'm, is it really a sword? It's not really a surprise me. Told him buy a top hat and a, and a, and a Put it on the wrist. Yeah. 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 Dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Like Walk God. the cobblestone streets of St. Anthony, Maine, and just yeah. whistle while you're working and then and swing around. St. Anthony, Same. Maine. Wow, yeah. Creepy, I'm, I'm creepy in things to people. <laughs> Donnie, you are you're from uh, you grew up in White Bear Lake, but uh, you went you were up in Vadnais Heights and went to high school in White Bear Lake. Go Bears! I don't know. That's a story Go I did Bears. when you're wrestling in semifinals in lacrosse. <laughs> I dropped this out there. Only Don Stoner, the Augsburg SID, picked it up. So those of you who know them, if you're from Minnesota, you, you probably hate the movie Fargo because everybody outside of the state hates it because um, they're not even from here. They don't know anything about this area. But uh, so like the movie. Donnie's wrestling in the semifinals, and I go, you know, and I say that line. I go, Long and I got there, grew up in Vadnais Heights, but went to high school in White Bear Lake. Go Bears! <laughs> and like, th- like, like three people got it, and then Don Stone of the Augsburg SID. ID like sends me a text. He goes, love it, love it, love it. Hashtag Fargo. I'm like, yes. It, <laughs> it, it didn't fall on deaf ears. So my uh, my budding PA slash stand up comedy career, Joe Rao, I think is in good shape. But yeah, uh, Donnie wrestling with the storm, working out at, at Pinnacle. I mean, you're, you're a little banged up right now, but uh, getting those competitive juices flowing again. Uh, you know, had a pretty good career at Augsburg, and uh, you know, like Joe Rao, you have the respect of the uh, the Division three brethren. What was it like wrestling at Augsburg coming back home? Um, you know, uh, I was in a pretty rough patch in my life when I came back here and decided to wrestle at Augsburg. So for me, it was, uh, it was like a chance of redemption, a chance of getting my life back on track, get, working towards my degree. And, uh, you know, it, it was, it was fun wearing that, uh, that maroon singlet, wearing the Augsburg colors. Cause you know, I grew up and a lot of guys in Minnesota did, uh, training there on Wednesdays and Mondays with, uh, Gordy and Morgan and, uh, Dan Chandler. So it was, uh. I don't know. It felt like I was doing the right thing. Felt like I was, uh, you know, fighting for the right cause, and uh, I, I just I enjoyed it a lot. Molsoff's always been really good to me too. He's a great coach, I and mean, uh, that that whole program is just outstanding. What's interesting is you guys come from vastly different backgrounds. Joe, you didn't even qualify for the state wrestling tournament. I qualified. Qualified. Once. You qualified. You didn't even place. That's I didn't right. Win you, a match. you didn't win a match. And Donnie was like the number one or two ranked heavyweight in the country, and you both end up winning division three titles. Now I did run into your teammate Mike Benefield, Benefield. at uh, similar in, to Donnie in, in Rochester. Kind of a similar deal with, with Donnie, but uh, I was asking, like, what was it like wrestling with Joe? And he goes, "Man." I didn't know who that guy was, and that guy just never quit. I hated wrestling. <laughs> so by the end of the year, he liked wrestling. But, uh, yeah, you know. yeah. So from your perspective, uh, you know, I'm going to get Donnie's perspective here in a minute from going the other way, but, you know, a guy that's not recruited, and then some guy like Benefield comes in, is like who's supposed to be all-world, and then you guys end up winning titles and being a part of a really good run as a team. I finished in second that year in the smallest arena known to man in Cedar Rapids. It was Rapids. cool, though. What was that was experience filled. like? It was amazing, and, like, you talk about my journey versus like somebody like Donnie or um, or Mikey's journey. That's what's cool about D three because you get people that come from all backgrounds. You get the guys who went D one that for whatever reason didn't work out, and you get the guys who nobody ever heard of before. Who over time, I feel like college is a place for you know like a lot of guys like me who worked really hard and things didn't go the way they wanted in high school. But you keep working at that at that rate. I think that like talent is is huge in high school you can get by a lot of hard workers with talent but once college comes around you need to work hard (laughs) and so that that kind of caught up and I started you know I started doing well and it's kind of cool how we all met there and it it gave uh, our team a really uh 
you know, a range of leadership, you know, some guy who's, who's done it all at a young age and was extremely talented and a guy who, uh, for lack of better words, always sucked and worked really hard. <laughs> and then he got good. And so slightly had, overweight. Yeah, slightly <laughs> overweight. So we had a lot. I'm not of, talking about Donnie. We had, a, we had a cool, between me, Bullard, and uh, Mikey, and then guys like Ryan Early. Ryan Early was kind of more like me. He was a guy who did really well at D3 but wasn't sought after by college recruits. It's it's kind of interesting talking to some of my contemporaries on this level about, like, their recruiting process. I'm like, you guys are lucky. Like, my my process was getting a letter from Elmhurst and then taking a five minute tour of the campus, eating a sandwich and saying, "All right, I'll come here." <laughs> it's like, hey, <laughs> like, weren't you the guy that beat McElroy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's your exactly, conversation with, exactly. with Mary yeah, I'm in. Um, but winning a title in that, I mean, I love the you know the Cedar Rapids Arena that we went to that second time around. It was tiny, but it felt packed. Ice arena, because yeah. no, nothing's worse than a huge arena with five fans in it. You know, you, just, you, you know, you look up, but that place actually felt packed. So it was really cool winning it there. And uh, me and Mikey, uh, we celebrated pretty hard after <laughs> that. You know, we came from different spots, but we ended at the same place, and it was really cool to share that with them. One thing that you know, Don of the year you spent in Division One. Granted, you, you weren't you weren't in line up your red shirting but uh you, you know what the division one tournament brings were you surprised at all at the level of fan interaction at the division three level um well i think it's a little different when you talk about like augsburg as far as the fan interaction goes because we have we usually bring a pretty big crowd to the tournament but like, and, the, like the luthers and you know with the, the chants and then wabash bringing everybody yeah. out with it then the mascot they brought the they brought the freaking mascot with the giant the giant it's a giant they're the giants the giant yeah. giants head it almost feels like the minnesota high school state tournament like during like the class no they didn't like, that year. They, just, yeah. they, they bring the whole town they bring the whole town buses, and last yeah. one out turn the light off it's like yeah. we're, like where sanders is from yeah, like the whole town packs up, and you can just tell everybody's there for the. It's, it's a good time, though. Yeah. Moving over to Zach Sanders, <laughs> whose brother Eric just recently celebrated his first wedding anniversary. So uh, our water's up for nice. that. Nice water's up. Our carbonated Cheers. water's up for that. <laughs> with, water. with, uh, with one on the way, <laughs> Zach's going to be an uncle here soon. Uh, two times, my sister. Four-time All-American, two-time uncle. <laughs> yeah. Sunday. Five-time state champion. Five-time state champion. Don't forget yeah, right. the two five-timers. Which, uh, by the way, the five-timer thing is actually a sore subject in the Sanders household when you bring up <clears throat> Mark Hall. Uh, yeah. We won't talk about that today because uh, Eric's still bitter about that. But <laughs> but Zach is from uh, from the, pr- the proud town of Wabasha, Minnesota, a town I know very well, uh, mainly because of the cabin and the Pioneer Club. And I think the smallest bowling alley on the planet. Pioneer Lanes or what is it? There's like, it's like eight lanes or four lanes. What's it's it? tiny. Uh, Grumpy old growing man. up, I didn't think it was that small, but well, remember, look at the ones around here. Ratio, yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the biggest one I've ever seen. <laughs> the biggest city <laughs> you've ever seen was Kansas. Normal, normal, it's normal. It's normal. <laughs> 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 but uh, but Zach's brother Eric has been, a, been, a, been a, a, actually I've known Eric longer than I've known Zach and it's funny he brews some of the best beer in used to be North Dakota now he's moved back to Minnesota so now when I'm on my way to Rochester I know where to stop in and fill a growler up but uh, Zach's a four time All American for those of you in, in Minnesota that don't know anything about the Sanders family wake up yeah mm-hmm. five five high school state titles I mean well, one what's it like to to wrestle varsity at the eighth grade because we didn't have that in Virginia um it was actually really cool I was I mean. Just like I would consider it being like a freshman in college, you know, you're just so excited because it's something new, you know. So it was it was really cool too because I got to spend that season with my brother on the same team as him, and even guys that I kind of looked up to a little bit, you know, I was on the same varsity team as them and stuff. So it was really cool, and obviously I had success that year. But I it was it's, it was such a weird year looking back because in the beginning of the year I was. Um, I think the first tournament I weighed in at like 93 pounds, and I was like super weak. Like, it's me like in second grade. Yeah, I mean, I was. <laughs> You'd have to grease so fast. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I got. I was, you shut up. <laughs> We're gonna have to do this more often, folks. Oh, you know, yeah. And by the end of the year at the state tournament, I, I broke 100 pounds for the first time, and I was like, I remember being in the weight room and being able to lift an insane amount compared to like the beginning of the season. It, so it was like it was the perfect. Bar plus. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly. I like was probably starting to mature at the perfect time because at the beginning of the season I was pretty weak and and then by the end of the year I was pretty strong and I'm like I mean, it felt like I was on steroids or something is what it felt like but that's how I say it to people I guess. 
You're still in the USADA testing pool, right? <laughs> I, I wasn't Would in eighth grade. I that. was so jacked in eighth grade. I was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. <laughs> you know, those guys that just disappear for a year. <laughs> the guy from Icarus was knocking yeah. on your door. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Sutter Sanders. <laughs> Pat Smith, Chaska, one of uh, the legacy of Greco Roman. You and you and the stash. You've been on a world team. We've sang karaoke overseas. Uh, you've got a, a, a budding, uh, much like Joe has a budding stand-up career. You've got you've got some open mic experience and some some musical talent to you. But uh, you know, homeowner, and you got to put up with these guys as roommates. What's what's it like being like the, the old man of the crew with your responsibilities? He's not the old man of the crew. But, uh, <laughs> hey, he's the one with the house. Yeah. yeah. Just his team. house, his rules. Yeah, Zach's a lot more clean than me, so he still keeps it, keeps us all in check. So as far as that goes. So you're the mother him. Thing. I don't want to be, but I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's how it goes. <laughs> but, no, it's cool. We kind of, like, I think I said this on the last time I had the podcast, but we got a cool thing going. It's kind of like the uh, – That was right when you got back from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. We, we call it, like, the uh, – the wrestling incubator here, you know, like they do in Silicon Valley with all the uh, startups and everything. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Got a bunch of guys just trying <laughs> to live the dream. Incubator is like here. this giant conference for like tech startups too. It's like, oh, give us a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. The wrestling incubator. <laughs> the wrestling incubator. I say that all the time. Come on. It is the wrestling incubator. All right, we've it, got we've gotten through the play. What, what were you going to say, Mr. Sanders? I was going to say it is really cool. We'll be just randomly talking about wrestling things all the time. You know, I think that's kind of all this podcast got brought up in the first place we were just i mean our talk we debated for over an hour we, in the car that's where you guys just need to put like half the trip you got all we that got, we got smartphones hit record yeah, yeah i know send it to me i can yeah. i can bleep out more insightful the than that than that bleep out joe Rouse's filthy mouth and we can be good the moment no, I, I talk i debate well all right as a week we were like you're full of food you're full of food but it is cool when i got on wired we'll be having great conversation about random things all the time like just philosophies and like things like how to get better in certain areas or just random wrestling talk. You know, I think it really brings us up a level, honestly. That's why I love living with these guys. They all are very passionate about wrestling, and I think it brings out the best in all of us. I really regret not recording some of the conversations <laughs> we had. Like when me, you, and Nord were talking, oh, when we, were wa- we went to watch Pat in the World Championships last year. We had some awesome talks. Seriously, Great Nord, talks. Nord is such a smart guy. Awesome, dude. Joe so Nord. With, with Massey taking the job, did, did Joe leave no, no. Columbia? No, nope, they're all there. Okay, now. I was yeah. going to say, wow, I got yeah. double Minnesota connection yeah. up there. I was wondering to bring in one big guy. Like, what happened to Joe? There? Yeah. Wow. He's um, cool. he's assistant there. So, awesome. yeah, like, Tonelli must really like the Minnesota guys. Yeah. So. And Joe, <laughs> what's not to like? <laughs> Joe thinks a certain way that's unique to most wrestlers, too. Yeah, He's sure. got a different way of thinking. It's really cool to talk to He's him. He's also a target for another episode of the Guilty and Grapevine because uh, it was that trip in Paris I learned that his dad was Nord the Barbarian. Yeah, I didn't oh, yeah. know that. I did not know that. I did actually bring this up before Brian. we started. The most famous alum, wrestling alum from Irondale High School. Is not Dustin Weinman, Division Three champ from lacrosse. It's actually Road Warrior Animal. Wow. <laughs> Road Warrior. I didn't know he was yeah. in there. Yeah, he is an Irondale grad. I learned That's that yesterday awesome. at my neighbor's uh, Fourth of July party. We spent a lot of time in the pool. Yeah, Nord's <laughs> very humble about not bringing that up and stuff. I think he kind of wants. Well, he's an adult now. He doesn't want to bring it up. Like I, like honestly, I didn't even know that until like probably a year into college, and then like once I heard that. Every time he's talking to someone, I'm like, hey, do you know his dad's Nord the Barbarian? <laughs> what do you think? Most and of the, he'd look at me and like, kind of like shake his head. I like, now you're going to talk to him that about this, you on know? On the way to the airport before our trip. Really? <laughs> yeah, you're like, he doesn't really like to talk about this. Well, what's but... funny is because he was telling a story. This is what probably was like, yeah, I used to think it was real. Or, or excuse me, it, it didn't realize it was scripted. But if you say it's not real to a pro wrestler, it's, it's, that's, you know, it's, it, we're in a hotbed of, hotbed rather, of the AWA in the era. So it's, uh, yeah, I felt like Undertaker's beating up my dad, man. I was. Like, <laughs> we got to save those stories for that. So now what we've we've had our I- interesting uh, introductions. The topics. First topic is name of this episode. Is it going to be shot reshot or attack reattack? Take your sides. Discuss. Ready, Joe Rao, go. You know I've heard ba- both, and uh, <laughs> I really have. I think I grew up with shot reshot, but I've heard both. 
But as far as the episode goes, <laughs> yeah, what, what, what goes better oh, for the well, like, episode? Well, you got, well, because, two like, full time Greco in guys, Minnesota, in, a, a split in, time guy, and a full time freestyle. In Minnesota, we sometimes like, the people, instead of say breakdown, people say bust on top. And that blows my mind. Yeah, I've never it sounds heard that really, really stupid to me. Bust? bust? Yeah, like the Augsburg, bust, they all call it bust. It sounds so stupid. To me, Ankle rides but, Iowa ride. But I call. I always, I always. It was always a breakdown. It was just true. Sorry, Iowa you know, people. tight waist shot, tight waist ankle breakdown, yeah. not not bust. But yeah. when it comes to shot reshot or you know attack so, reattack, I call it shot reshot. That's yeah, my vote. Like a uh, a shot reshot is what I think of someone shooting, and then the other guy shoots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Well, I call that a counter. Yeah. To me, a reshot is your second attack. Yeah. I, I think well, um, there's offensive. Remember, shots. I'm the worst wrestler at this table. Oh, it doesn't matter. So. It's all terminology. Like you can be anywhere in the country and hear the same move ten different names yeah. for. You know. So yeah, yeah. Let's bring up Flow Wrestling's renaming of the Head front pinch. headlock. By the way, <laughs> all of a sudden Joe's killing people with front headlocks at the last chance qualifier, and the the name of the front headlock gets turned into a head pitch. Never heard it before, but I was like, hey, I appreciate the. Well, uh, which way, the rouse, which way do you go? Are you going over top with it, or are you going left or right with it? I. I got it locked. His arm's over here, and I'm coming. See, I can't. Remember, they, they, they I mean, can't watch sense. you, Joe. You have to explain it. Okay, that, I, 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 go, I go every which way with it. But loose. I, I go every which way with it, but why, I've never heard head pinch before. Yeah, I, have you ever seen kids in the hall? I'm crushing your head. I'm, I'm pinching, pinching your face. Your head. I'm pinching your <laughs> face. I, I like that term because I think of the position as a, a front headlock position. Mm-hmm. But, like, the pinch is like you're going to just tip them over, you know? Like, um, yeah. And I, I think the first time I heard it was Mitch McKee. Maybe like they were refer- referencing. He is really Mitch good McKee's at whatever, really good yeah. whatever you want to call the move. Yeah, yeah. but it's like the front headlock's <laughs> the actual position, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can yeah. do whatever you want from the front headlock position, but a pinch. But it's is a just chest kind of- lock, but it's a head pinch. Doesn't make sense. Ch- I thought chest the chest lock. locks more, more deep like the Paulsons. But I mean, if it's a chest, chest, chest lock, chest and then I got the head and arm lock. This is going to be the best episode it's of the Great Line ever. Though. Chest lock is around both arms. Chest lock. So that that that. That's a, a lock, and that's a pinch. Yeah, you just got to pinch. I feel arm, like a pinch is with arm. your fingers. You got a head and arm. <laughs> For everybody that doesn't understand what we're talking about, the finger thing, take your thumb and your index finger. Find somebody's head. No, everybody over the right age. Between, everybody my age. Pinch. I'm surprised yeah. somebody okay, Joe's age actually knows what kids in the hall is. I got to... Well, you know I'm a comedian. I've watched really weird comedy. Mm. Upright recently. Citizens Brigade and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, I but, went to UCB when I was in New York. So, uh, I like... Not to get off topic too much, but I like the head pinch because it's specific to the position. Like, oh, I get it. Okay, I'm not going to just run a front headlock. I will right? go typically front headlock roll. It depends on which <laughs> way it goes. Front headlock roll through. Right now. Uh, you know, it me depends on like the difference between uh, that and a gator roll or a mixer like, based on how they set up. A front head roll to me is like when you roll towards the side of the arm. That's the old school. Like when I was a kid growing up, front head roll, you know. And now you got these like little flip over, like a chest lock position, yeah. only head and arm. Just flip it over, pinch. Well, I, I just appreciated the publicity by <laughs> Flow Wrestling. I don't, I don't care what they say. Yeah, it doesn't matter. My name. It, it doesn't cool. matter what they you call my name. You know. Undefeated. Uh, no, four-time national champ at Oklahoma State. Oh, wait. Yeah, you've never gotten that before. Uh, Every way since tell I was six John years old. Smith, tell <laughs> yeah, me John baby. Smith story when you're you asked your name. You're young to be Pat Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different guy. <laughs> my parents don't know anything about wrestling, so don't yeah. go there. <laughs> yeah. I grew up, there was a, a Jason Bryant that went to one high school over a year ahead of me. Stud baseball player, stud football player. Yeah, when Facebook came around, I got a lot of people from Tab High School adding me on Facebook. No, wrong <laughs> guy. Out to that yeah, that, guy, guy, that yeah. guy went to like West Point or something. He's like legit. I was like, nope. I'm the, and I, you search the newspaper archives, half are stories about him and the other half are stories I wrote. So <laughs> it's like, yeah. So I guess we've, we've settled the name of the show, not the move. We were talking about the episode is going to be shot, reshot. You should get though, that guy on the show. Must be. I think it might track have, him he, down. He might have wrestled. I don't know. Track him down. I don't know. Shot reshot's cool. The whole point is right. Well, I'm saying why would a Greco is like is you a say shot? something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You say something. They come back with their. No, the topic you guys were discussing last week that prompted this was about both styles, and we we mentioned Adam Kuhn earlier. He's won the spot in Greco, second in freestyle. Would that's you know, what's the question? Like, what was the argument Could last week? somebody way? win world championships in both styles? And I say yes. In the same year. Pat said yes. 
and Zach says it's impossible. And then we changed it to in probable. The same year, we right? changed the vocabulary to Pl- probable. How about plausible. We'll go Mythbusters on this. Plausible. 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 Okay. Likely? I don't know. It's not got, very we got likely. Three years ago. But it's possible. Well, yeah. Very it's difficult. possible. It's definitely possible because we put people on the moon. We've but that was after an hour, over but an I hour. Said, depending on how you, if you subscribe to the I moon theory, it, the I said it was, don't do that. Over I said an it was, hour of conversation, was, Zach finally stopped saying it was impossible. I said it's possible, but it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. He said it. He said it's never going to happen, but it's possible. But I said it, for no. an hour, Zach was saying it's impossible. I'm saying you're, it's not very but, likely. And here, here's it's possible, my, but the only way it's going to happen is at heavyweight. That's what I said. I actually said I that disagree. to Pat There's after no the discussion. Way. Well, I disagree. We did get some information from Travis Rutt that there was a guy in 1932 at welterweight. Wrestling's come welterweight a long way was. since yeah. 1932. Oh, that's, another, that's another side debate that was very... Uh, a, 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 Re- heavyweight he, wrestling versus... Everybody else. Yeah. yeah. I think I think that it could happen at any weight. I think it could happen, and, and it was our like Greco high level Greco guys are their skills transferable to freestyle and vice versa. And I say that there's Greco guys from other countries that don't wrestle our style of freestyle. You know what I mean? They wrestle a Greco like style of freestyle, and they hit one move. They specialize in one move, and it could be done. I think that somebody could win worlds in both in both weights, and I don't think people aim for it. Could an American do it? Yeah, who is you know, so? Who is the most? Who would be a likely American that would be a threat? I think that we are in an era. I mean, can, let's go back ten years. Let's let's give it that window. The thing is, is now you can't even compete in both because the times are always at the same time, and there might be in a different place of trials. It's like Kuhn did an amazing thing, um, but he had to fly out the same the night. One, like, he almost did it. Peace out. He almost did it. I, I know the I guy get that, that he wrestled in the saying, finals is a medalist. Was a Wasn't he on both teams one year? Taylor was. I have uh, no idea. I don't think no, so. No, no. The no. last guy to do it. Now, Frazier apparently Probably won been, both no. and chose Greco. I don't have. Hang on. That's I, heavyweight. We said it no, can't Frazier be. No, Frazier is not heavyweight. No, no, no. I know Frazier, but I'm saying, like, the example we just used is heavyweight. Bomb Sorry, gunner? heavyweights. Don't get mad at me. Um, but I'm just watch saying. It. <laughs> well, their style, their <laughs> no, no, freestyle, right. and freestyle and folk style is very similar. I mean, freestyle and Greco is very similar at the heavyweight posi- heavyweight weight class. Regardless. A lot of shrugs, a lot of throwbacks. It's, it's just like the same. I mean, the Snyder, exception Snyder is you've got guys like Achgul and Petriashvili who are freaking true. great legged. I mean, that's why yeah. a Greco, it's going to be very hard for a Greco guy to beat him. They're just going to lace him up or something. I'm not know? scared of a lace. All right, so I'm scared of I'm scared of leg attacks on my feet. Like seriously, laces are easy to defend, in my opinion. Their parterre is not my worry. My my worry is people shooting on me. I wanted a more well, spirited debate. that's a lot debate. more common position I'm gonna, than I'm going to go. I'm going to yeah, really go with a Gre- Greco debate here, real quick. Okay, better. Okay, take take traded briefcases and alleged uh, match throwing off the table. Corellan versus Lopez. Ooh. Who wins? Straight up, Ooh. no shenanigans. In their prime. In their prime. Ooh. I gotta go with Corellan. I think I think that Lopez. In his prime on the same program as Corellan, he wins by landslide victory. Like, d- explain program. Program as in steroids. <laughs> Alleged steroids. They both I mean, were, right? Lopez they both if were. Lopez grew up in Siberia, yeah. is that what you're saying? This Lopez no, was they unbeatable. The they this Lopez the, was unbeatable. They they and the, the, and the myth that I hear is that he rode around in his car with a 45-pound plate and he worked out every now and then, and he's beating everybody in the world. And uh, every now and then he got enough money to lose because he's getting bribed. And Corellan's legacy, it, money he's was not a factor. dropping everybody on his head. Oh, yeah, but no, those money was not a factor. Bribing. I mean, not only steroids. I'm talking about money. Like Lopez eventually became one of the wealthiest guys in Cuba, which is still like less than minimum wage here. You know, he can afford a golden tooth. That's about it. <laughs> you know, Him like, and I actually have the same birthday, believe it or not. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm three years older. I think... I think like means he's old. The skills he had in, in Russia. This is I'm, I mean I'm t- talking very hypothetical. So you're saying they're given situation in their prime. I still I still think Lopez might beat him. And that was another that was another thing we were talking about with Zach is how much wrestling's evolved. I said that Gable would still beat everybody, and he doesn't think so. I think there's. I think I think once you get to a certain level. Uh, just to go mm-hmm. back to what Joe said, it's like, man, both those guys are at such an elite level. It's like, what was Corellan, like 11 or 12 years he didn't lose or something? It was 13, I think. 13 years? I think it was 13, yeah. Yeah. So it's like 13 years, it's like, 
at some point, Lopez probably could have beat him in the 13 years. And then yeah. who knows? Maybe uh, well, he'll be if, the best. You know what I mean? It's like once well, you get well, to a let's, certain let's level. Back it up. So do you think in their prime, Lopez beats Rulon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's like once you get to a certain distributive level. Distributive property of wrestling. So like if, if he could beat Rulon, it could probably beat Corella, yeah. right? I think the only reason why Lopez ever lost was money. You know? It's crazy. I mean, it's the only okay, reason. Okay, here's the story. Oh, oh, 06, Lopez wrestles uh, Barova in the finals in, in Guangzhou. It gets tacked like 6 0 7 0. Uh, no, no. Next year, <laughs> World Championships in Baku, my first Worlds, comes down. Now, let's set the story here, too. There was the team scores. The USA was up by, I think, two points going in, or going in the final. And then all of a sudden, there was a special match for eighth place to qualify for the Olympics. Well, the Russian won that match. Gave, they gave him an extra team point because of it, because they finished like ninth, the eighth, and the, they didn't wrestle. So the, the team scores went from one thing, and I took a screenshot of it, to another thing. I still have, I, I don't know, that's 10 computers ago, but I had it ready to go in case there were some shenanigans. Well, it come to find out, okay, if it happens, then there's a tie. We lose because we don't have enough titles. The U.S. does. Well, without that point, it wouldn't have mattered. But it comes down to heavyweight, Lopez versus Barov. The story is that uh, there was ready to be a, a, a payoff, and Russia would win. Then, and apparently, an unnamed American goes, "No, nah, I'll you win straight up. Then I'll give you your money. Like paid him to to wrestle straight up. Like wow. And yeah. uh, when Lopez wins, Lindsey Durlacher was the first guy to jump into his arms. <laughs> 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 he just won the team title. Awesome. Oh yeah, that was the year, right? That was the yeah, year. That was wow. the late Lindsey Durlacher. Cool. So wow. yeah. So apparently there was a counter. Oh, oh, there was a oh, counter oh, seven, argument. Oh, about, yeah, yeah. oh no, you don't lose. No, you win. We'll pay you. Like Brad Bearing was on the team. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're not going to say who that like was. Well, I mean, the same thing like that. Yeah. That's absolutely legitimately. I saw that blockade. Yeah. The same thing with the Turkish guy. He he wins and. He wins. But he's he's like good too. The yeah, but then what happened? Really in, what happened the next year well, when Lopez weekend. actually wrestled? Yeah, yeah. I mean it's like, it's like in Turkey when, when when Lopez throws the thumbs up after he gets crotch lifted. Well, not crotch lifted, but you know belly yeah. tilt. It's like you can't do that to him. Mm. So what the what's what's the, what's the uh, so you said Corella and you said Lopez. I said Lopez. Pat, I think Lopez could beat him. I mean, shoot, I don't know. Corella was a freak. I mean, like, and we're talking you, about we're talking about like, I mean, guys would turn over and get pinned so that they wouldn't get dropped on their heads. Has like, anybody ever seen the video of, of of Corell and throwing Craig Pittman? Mm-mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> where he goes over. The, it's like the '89 Worlds well, or something like that. Have you seen the video of when he like? Takes Rulon's feet like over his head or something like that. Doesn't Rulon like Rulon fall on his feet? I still think Curl and even as time. big as Rulon is now could probably do that to Rulon now. Yeah, he's that strong. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's like once you get to a certain level, everyone's good. It's like who's on that day? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think he would have. It's been like a great, they're both great matchup. They're both for that him. insane level move. where they both had the ability to win whenever. Yeah. You know, it's just like who's gonna? You know what I mean? Like. He was big and he has the athleticism. Like whenever to make someone asks me who's going to win between these two insanely good guys, like you know, is it just like Jordan Burrows LeBron, or Chimizo? You know? It's like, damn, they're so good. Like either of them could win. I'm obviously cheering for Burrows, but it's like once you get to a certain level, it's like it's not even worth wasting your energy thinking about it. It's just like let's just enjoy this. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. So that level could of have been a great match. rivalry. Yeah. Rivalry to watch would have been cool if they could t- yeah. shift time. Now going back to the, the Gable situation. How many, you know, we look at the records and we're all, you know, below 40. I have to I have to move the lineup because I'm 38. <laughs> so <laughs> relatively young compared, you know, what we consider the modern era of wrestling usually is like post Gable loss, believe it. Like 70 is like 69, 70 is kind of like the new era because the tournament stopped being open in 1970. And it's like everything from 70 on is like a different era from like, you know, the Vern Gagne days, the Dick Hutton days, the, you know, those, those, those eras. Stories you've heard about wrestlers that you believe could probably compete today. Let's, we're using college here, not internationally. So, Pat, start with you. Any, anybody that, that is kind of in wrestling lore that you think that could be able to compete today and, and be successful? I mean, any of those guys that were elite, elite back then, like all those gold medalists, like any of those guys in that 72 team, I'm sure would be competing today. And I think, and we talked about this in the Rick car Sanders, ride. Imagine him wrestling today. That would be cool. <laughs> He's my wild. uncle. Cool. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But, you, I mean, you talk about that. I think people that get to an elite level don't get there just on 
pure talent. I'm not talking about like just winning the U S but being consistently the best guy in the world over and over again. A lot of those guys have the same kind of mindset where they would have found a way. I, I believe that, um, you know, you see that in successful people across the board, they, they find a way and they take ownership of it. And I think, I think you see that in guys like that in those really elite teams that the U S had even back then. And I think it, they would definitely compete. Now who knows what it comes down to strings. I, I think wrestling was definitely different back then. Now how, wrestling is different back then and applies to now um, and how long that would take for those guys to make the adjustment um, to the different styles or maybe their different style would mess up somebody in today's I mean it's so hard to compare you don't know and I I think it's really like uh, I think it's important to note too that like we're probably in a really short period of time we're comparing like 30 years but like people have been wrestling since the beginning of time right like and it's constantly evolving so to say that we've reach like some kind of like pinnacle level right now, I think is a little bit ignorant because we're going to be looking back 30 years from now and people are going to be laughing at what oh, we were doing, sure. you know? So yeah, I mean, I think there's guys that definitely would be competing I think right now, you know, I, I think they're like really elite people, you know? Oh, without a doubt, you know, if they went through the same system and stuff as us. So my, what my argument was at the time was that take him then transfer him to now he get his ass kicked. You know what I mean? Sorry for my language. <laughs> You can say ass on this show. But the thing is, is like... Now, he was saying that if, but, like, Gable came right now, from had then, no training He's, right like, now, 70. No, I mean, like, like, Gable oh, in no. his prime came so, into wrestling right now, I, that I he wouldn't do agree. well. And I, I disagree. I definitely agree with what Pat said. It's like, if they grew up in our system, they found, like, the same way we grew up and stuff, they'd probably find a way because they're elite people. But and, I'm not even talking about... But, I'm not even talking about growing up in our system. I'm talking about give them a few tournaments. Oh, maybe no way. If you're in their prime... Get them a time machine okay, and they would they'd figure it out. <laughs> These guys were studs. I, think I don't think I don't there's think only so. a few. I think there's tons of them. Oh, yeah, but when you tons say it's like they're elite people, they'd find a way. But keep in mind, over the last 30 years, there's been a lot of elite people stacking up. You know what I mean? So it's like, think about it as like going the, through college. The it's waiting only list a, for the Hall of Fame is crazy. Yeah. It's like you've to, for the Hall of Fame, you've got to have... Almost you've got, almost got to have like international. Te- you got to make international teams in a different style to even be considered. Think these of, days think of right. college. Think of college as guys that are like within five years of each other. Either way, right? Think of international. There's no time limit. It's like so when you get to like the international level, guys are competing against each other. Guys from the 2000, 2000 what Hayes would go. 2007, 2008, maybe. I don't know what year he graduated. One of those years, 2007, I think. Would have been when he lose in the finals in seven in uh, Auburn Hills. That was 07 because that was my senior year of high school. I remember that. In 08. Yep. That sounds right. Everybody was so sad. So <laughs> for sure, because everyone loves yeah. Sam. He's he went awesome. Three, three, dude. three, two. It was like my buddy's sitting next to me. He goes, I feel sad. Was that the Nickerson or that Escobedo? was to Donahoe? Donahoe. That's who it was. Yeah. yeah. So it's like the thing is, is like. All those people, they, ate their, they don't graduate when they're international level. So it's like we're facing like the best of the best of the best, but there's no time limit, you know? It's so like, tell them what you told me, what okay. your honest opinion. You're going to narc uh, on Sanders like that? No, <laughs> well, this is the, this is the, this that, is, that the, point. This is the right. debate. This was the point. I was just saying, like, if you were to take him then and put him in now, he'd get his ass kicked. I disagree. We'd have to, he'd have to grow up in our system and, like, Wrestling has evolved so much in the last 10 years since I was a kid to now the kids that I see and the kids that I coach the last few years. It's like I'm amazed how good their skill set is. And I was a really good kids wrestler. Skill set for sure. But I think there's, I'm like there's amazed intangibles. Their skill set. There's intangibles that can compensate. I think toughness has gone down. Yeah, but the very best of the best are definitely <laughs> tough. You know what I mean? I think a Gable would win at, in any era. A Dan Gable type of athlete. I really yeah, they do. still do. They still that type I, of athlete uh, still wins to this day. Exactly. So I think you take Gable and put him in any time. I'm just saying he would have had to and, grow and up here, in our here time. Here is my there's here is one of my the skills are so important. Was that like a Dan Gable at 50 was still was still kicking the crap out of everybody at Iowa who was yeah. 20 years old. You know, the guy he had all these surgeries was still going in the room. These he, guys couldn't score on him. There's stories walk. of the best in the world. <laughs> Where this guy couldn't move his arms because Gable weared on one arm for an hour. If you can't beat a guy hour, that can barely walk, well, then you better work on your skill set. Also, I'm let's that, also like, look at some of the wrestling coaches. Them, yeah, you know, how, right. many, how many it's coaches like, that were in their prime 20 years ago still kick the yeah, crap what, out of everybody I mean, that's current? Luke there's Becker so many guys, right now, there's so many guys <laughs> that I wrestled that like helped me along the along the way that I've never scored on. Pat Quirk, well out of his prime. He took second twice to Munoz. 
Uh, maybe once. I don't know if it was twice or once in Illinois. Never scored a point on him. I wrestled When's the him last all time through you wrestled college. him? I don't know. But when I wrestled when him last, college. he was definitely not in his prime. Still never scored on the guy. When I was when if I made the world team, right they, now, they texted me. You, you still he never score scored on work. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, here's the one thing I'm to remember, that, Gable. I, I think there's. What weight class do you see him competing at today? Because people always see him. He's a larger than life. He would have been like a 145 and a right, half, right? right? Yeah. 42. His senior year was 30, 130, 137, 142 were the weights. So you're you're thinking like, let's back it up. Like, could he like put him in there today against Bryce Meredith? I mean, let, let's compare. I, I think. It would be the same you, weight class, right? Yeah, it's basically the same weight class. I think he beats Bryce Hayes. Exactly. I think that's the point. Well, yeah, I don't think I he mean, can get it. Like, looking at 141 I think he beats pounds. Yeah. But to our point, we're talking about international but, again, oh, right? I'm, 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 everybody, though, I don't I'm think, trying to stick with the, uh, the yeah. collegiate stuff, I think you're over-glorifying our, our current era. Yeah. Yeah, we got, we got no film. Way. We have transcended and, uh, talents see, in our era. We're yeah, blessed to have like guys like Burroughs come through. But to say that we're some kind of special, I think, is a little bit over the top. No, but wrestling in general is way better. And this is this is my argument. We're not different. It's different. That we went we're not in this different direction. people. We're intrinsically biased because we grew up in this. We're era. not different people. We're the same genetics. We're, we're the same. We're the same people. But I'm just saying, training, science, skill sets is way higher now. I think science and all that is important, but I don't. I think that I I weigh grit higher than any of those things. And I think you're that, taking away from the grit then of the guys that are world champions now. Like, yeah, I guess I am. And uh, I think that I think science and all that other stuff. Shots fired. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. uh, This is this is my honest opinion. I'm respectfully (laughs) disagreeing. Yeah, yeah. I think you know. We we were saying. You guys keep talking. I gotta use a little boys' room. Okay. <laughs> this is a little boys' room. This could be fun room. to go back to listen to. Yeah. All right. Let's talk crap about Jason right it's now. Let's <laughs> talk crap about Jason. Grab my phone real quick. Let's all talk crap about Jason. <laughs> well, well, now I, I lost my train of thought. But uh, so we were talking. We were about, disagreeing about. Yeah, we were disagreeing about like, where wrestling is now. Okay, now now I remember. So I think that as somebody who is so in the sport, like Zach Sanders. He is, he's an expert in the sport right now. I think that you you have such a high regard for our sport and respect for the athletes of your era and the level of technique that you understand and that you witness from people. But I think that it takes an amateur like you know perspective to realize that anything's possible and that we are only, you know maybe over respecting the current era. I think that it's great that we have coverage and we have film and all this stuff is accessible to our athletes. And at a young age, um, we have guys winning cadet world titles and junior world titles. I still don't think that there wasn't guys back 40 years ago, given the opportunity, would win against these guys that are cadets Here's and juniors. Here's a good question, too. And how much does that you know access to information and, and science and all that stuff um, relate to the fact that then maybe there's like less ownership um, that people are taking with their own stuff because they're waiting yeah. for the the next you know advancement or just the next technique that they see or you know or they're waiting for that coach to show them because now the it's shifted to this this idea that oh somebody's I can do it but I need somebody there holding for me holding your hand I think that there's and, so much more of that and, without uh, a doubt but the best guys hand. the best guys in the entire world are very good at coaching themselves they're very good at taking ownership for themselves I'm talking the best. We're yeah. all talking about the very best of the best, yeah. right? Yeah. They're they're they, they're not the, the best guys are not hand holders. Okay. The best guys are going to do the tough stuff already because they, they, they enjoy it because that that's what makes them feel good. Yeah. yeah. You know I what think, I mean? I think back in the day though, the toughest guys are way tougher than now. Well, yeah. Well, well I, to, to so his point, to, his, to a, Joe's point, they didn't have as much technologically. They didn't have as much you know high end. I mean, it was like you're like free weights and I'm gonna dungeon also, wrestling rooms and horse they, hair mats. They, they, also didn't have, they also probably didn't have good training partners. You know what I mean? Compared to what we have access to now. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, like, I think it goes oh, to Joe's, Joe's, Joe's point about grit. I think is relevant because again, they had horse hair mats. Yeah. yeah. Canvas wrestling. Well, they, 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 they were horse hair mats. Yeah. They were horse hair mats. And then Man, it's just well, just some of the stories day. you hear about those guys because they didn't they didn't get to go overseas. And some how of those long, guys. How first, long did a flight take to get overseas? First back tournaments then? Like, were. Donnie took a two week ship ride. He took a slow boat to <laughs> and London didn't to and didn't get to wrestle. Yeah, because oh, yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't think the Americans were ready to wrestle Greco yet. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Could yeah. you imagine going to the Olympics? Two on weeks a two on a freighter or something. A boat. <laughs> if I had a boat. Yeah. <laughs> I read that book on Broken, and it was about uh, that Zanfernini, the guy um, yep. who was a prisoner of war in Japan, Louis Zanfernini. 
He was from Torrance, California, track guy. I think a mile runner. Yep. Is he a mile? Yeah, he was a mile guy. And he took a boat, very similar to Gagne, took a boat over there. It was in Berlin. And the whole time, they like couldn't work out for two weeks. He's a track runner, right? It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, does, they, like, they would how, run around the boat was all they could have. And how, it was, how does that even work? And they had like unlimited food, and he's probably never been exposed to that in his entire life. He said he gained like 10 pounds, ran like crap at the Olympics. It's just a different world back then, you know? Everybody did, you know? And, and uh, he said a bunch of wrestlers ate too much, too, and they yeah, had to go up weight classes. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, man. yeah, it said that in the book. <laughs> they, they had no idea. They probably didn't have a scale on the boat. Now we're freaking out. We don't get a right. scale in the hotel room. <laughs> Two things I want to point out about the house here. One... Joe will actually get a kick out of this. One, there's two things. One, I like about the house. You have a hanging pot rack. This is something I, I desire to have oh, in my kitchen. It's nice. Secondly, yeah. there is you a hit t- your head on it all the time, though. Not, there's, not me, though. <laughs> there's a ton of crap in the bathroom. No, it's actually it's a book called Ton of Crap. It's on the back. Yeah, <laughs> it's my book. book. Yeah. Yeah. I figured that was right up right up your alley. So I think I, that's some a good t- stuff in that book. That's, it's also is. I mean, all I think the literature in the living room is mine. There's like four books that are. I mine. go to the bathroom upstairs sometimes just so I can read that book. It's a good book. <laughs> it's a good book. <laughs> you live in the basement. I live in the basement. He always lives. Me in and the Donnie basement. do. Wait, Donnie so, actually lives in a cave. Right. Okay, it's, stop. I got I got to know this too because you've got the heavyweight and the lightweight living in the basement. I never understood why on wrestling trips. They'd always, you know, put four in a room, and they would always put, like, all four lightweights in one room, and then four heavyweights in one oh, room. Oh, that's like, terrible. Why am I staring to bed with a 215-pounder? I agree. Like, w- w- give me a three-pounder. I they mean, didn't come do on. that. When I was a 103-pounder, I shared with our 280-pound heavyweight. See, that's, that's, that's because your be. coaches were smart. I didn't move. I thought he was going to roll over on top of me. Say, I, I didn't wake what, up what, not, what, not waking up. We talked about this. There's, heavyweights and lightweights have a lot of the same problems. Like yeah, training we, partners. it's hard to find training partners. It's hard to this find. This is good. I really like when they talk about this. I agree. Uh, we have good wrestling. We have wrestling talks like They're this so, all the time. Same, same. I don't think I've <laughs> heavyweights and same little guys. <laughs> same, same. I didn't have a guy. So different, the, but so in the, in the Minnesota room, I wrestled someone who was bigger than me every day for five years. I think. I don't think I wrestled anyone smaller than me. I, I mean, you I know. think. No, well, on the, opposite end. the only guy I think I know smaller than you that actually wrestled. Well, Tim Hands was like a little guy. Timmy Hands, Timmy, shout five out. Five point Timmy Hands and five He point was move. like the littlest guy. Uh, and there was another guy. Well, TJ Hill was the only other, yeah, other guy that was, guy. I think, that knows smaller than you. So it's hard finding partners when you're big and small, right? Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I went to, I, I've done a few Greco practices, you know, down there. To- <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I mean, Joe's wrestled 14 weight classes in yeah, his career. Yeah. I mean, how do you. I mean, like, I I just I, go with the flow, man. In the last oh, four years, I got no wrestles. training partners. I'll just get fatter. He's, he's like he's like the ultimate utility guy. He's yeah. like um, Swiss Army. He can guy. wrestle either style. If, he, if can he, wrestle, he can wrestle. He can wrestle any weight class. If he know? was fantasy baseball, he'd have like he'd have the catcher sign, first base, second base. You could put him at catcher, yeah, yeah, utility, yeah, sure. middle infielder, corner infielder, Comedian, outfielder, wrestler, like, yeah. <laughs> like Denny Hawking back in the old day of the Twins. You remember? Yeah, him? yeah I remember him. Yeah. See, I'm not a Twins fan, oh, yeah. so this is like twins back lore. in like early like, I don't 2000s. Hate, let me just make this clear. I, I live here. I don't hate the Twins. That was like the it's Corey good. Kosky days. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm an Angels fan, but you know they're the AOS, so they're they're really not a factor except for that year. Uh, the Angels did beat the Twins in the ALCS. I was actually at a game. That was kind of sad. At the Metrodome when Milton and Washburn were on the mound against each other. I drove into Metrodome. Yes, and then they met in the ALCS later that year. But as far as being a Minnesota, I like the Twins. I don't believe in number two teams, so my, my Twins history is a, is a little lack. But, uh, yeah, I go to Target Field and have a good time. It's a great it's, stadium. It's a, it's, a great, it's a great team. We develop a lot of good guys, and then Yankees, whoever else steals yeah, them. take them away. Yeah. And I'm we a Cubs fan, but I like We got like money, too. We just don't pay it out. Games. We don't pay it out. Yeah. We got, well, we got yeah, the yeah, Twins right. games on, what, Tuesdays? Mauer's got a hey, lot Donnie, of money. settle down over there. This is true. Yeah. The <laughs> Wait, so this is, this is a long time ago, but Zach, if there were somebody from the past that could win now, who would it be in your book? Because I got like 20 people. I got one. Outside, of, I think Gable would have probably I got so been many people compete. that I could think of. Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, it's I like. I got one. It'd be your, he'd be smaller than you. Rick Sanders is pretty studly. Terry McCann? Gray Simons. Gray Simons. Okay. <laughs> Gray Simons. That's that the problem it. with this generation. He's, he's a coach of old dominion I know through. wrestling history pretty well. <laughs> but but like Gray Simons. Gray won seven national titles, four in the NAIA, and three Division One titles. Hmm. He was OW six of those. It must have been pretty good. <laughs> Lockhaven. Wrestle a lot. Huh? Like, he can walk into Lockhaven now and never have to buy a drink ever. Like, he is like. 
still oh, well, because most of the people in Lackey have been wrestling fans out there still fairly old. So he's <laughs> why why like Lehigh wrestling how, fans? Why Gray so, Simons old. versus uh, Kenny Monday or uh, or, or he was Schultz, he's recent or, or Simons or, last last title was in sixty two. Okay, so he's Kenny Monday. Blue Ball. Kenny or, Monday's uh, Blue Ball was in like the OW alone, the Olympic. in meanness alone. Gray used Gray and Doug Blue Ball were really good friends. I've heard stories about that guy. He was the strongest guy. I think J Rob said this. Doug Blue Ball. Yeah, was he the guy who couldn't he see? Penny he was Iranian kind of blind. He was like mm-hmm. really couldn't see very well. He had I've big, heard, thick glasses. I've yeah. heard Jay talk about him a few times. Gray, I, you know, Gray was at the, the coach of Old Dominion when I was when I was there, and we didn't have a full time assistant at the time, so I'd go into practice and I'd just go sit on the couch. He just he'd walk out of practice sitting there talking to me. That's probably why we were kind of bad at the time. And he'd tell me he's like, "This is Doug Blueball," and then he used to. Power That's what your Doug volunteer Blueball assistants forever. are for. They're yeah, supposed well, to run dude, shit. this was this was a half funded division <laughs> one. Shout out the volunteer no assistants. I'm just kidding. This Jack was, Sanders. See, Joe Russell knows those. this now. He knows oh, how the other half was after Give coaching at George Mason. He knows that not everybody has. I don't run 18, anything. Like you don't have Dylan Ness just hanging out in your wrestling room at yeah, school yeah. like George Mason or ODU. But, um, but he was telling me that Blue Ball was so strong and so mean, oh, like yeah. just mean. Like there's something about being a mean son of a on the mat. Like people aren't as mean old man anymore. Stri- it's like mean. Yeah, they, are. You know? they are. Like people, so people think they're angry and then, then they check their, then they check their just, phone and they forget mean? about it. You, <laughs> you know? guys who are mean, no, I'm so angry. Oh, I just got a text from that girl. What was I angry <laughs> like, about again? Like, mean versus, versus like today. dirty. It's not like, no, yeah. like just because smartphones back Dan then. Dan Hodge was mean. Like rip your arm off for years. Like that type of Doug Mike Thorne was mean. Mike Thorne was mean. When I think of mean, I think of him. He's one of my best friends. I, I think like him. mean. I like mean in wrestling. You know, <laughs> but like cheap. You know, there's. I see cheap not people trying. Cheap, no, 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 there's I know. A I know. Cheap and mean. Yeah. I see some people though. Like they go out there. The guys that are really mean. You know, they're not in that flow zone. They're just thinking. They're like, mm, I can't wait to eat this guy's ear. You know, it's I like think for like, like skill no, level. No, 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 no. There's a controlled mean, and that's College the best mean. College friend of mine mean, did that. Ate yeah, somebody's yeah. ear. I think. He may or may not have been on the team. I've seen, people, I've seen people bite people in matches think, before. I think like Sushil uh, Kumar did that at the Olympics in 12. I think the, the, the relationship <laughs> between meanness and like skill level with our generation are, are inversely proportional, right? Yeah. You realize the, a lot of old people are going to hate all of us for this. Probably. No, I'm saying that like the more skilled we've gotten, the less mean we've gotten. And, and, what? and, and, and then that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm getting a very angry call from Paul Earhart. No, I think mean is good. <laughs> guy, I think mean is good. Right. And that's like part of my there's argument not, for why there's, there's a lot of old like, guys that could... There's nothing wrong with like in a position to crunch someone to crunch them. But the thing is, is like even like the mental training of our sports gotten like way up there. It's like... People, People get in the flow, the flow zone. They're not even thinking out there. They're just flowing from one thing to the next. You're telling me that the guys back in the day weren't did. in their flow zone. I they mean, definitely did. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That was kind they of a stupid. Get the flow zone. Oh wait, that was kind <laughs> of stupid. Zone. But what, you know what I'm saying is like <laughs> Zio. If flow hasn't picked that up, I they should really, probably do that. Yeah. And give us royalties. Hey, you better um, <laughs> because we know they're pulling it. Give me a shout out for that. But for real, like, hold on, we're in we're in the MSG flight pattern right now. MSG flight pattern. I really believe like most areas of our sport have got evolved to a better place than they were 30 years ago. I like, think that almost every, every wrestler, area. all the top wrestlers, their highest competitor, they got a picture of them on Instagram together and they're and they're and they're in a stupid pose. Yeah, but that's I think <laughs> that Gable's top competitor, Owings, he wanted to rip his head off. He had he a picture of Gable from guy. the amateur wrestling news on his locker or something. That is like that. that true? He had such respect for Gable cuz after he beat him he had mental problems. He's okay. like, I beat my idol, and then he couldn't okay. function the rest of his life. But he also talked smacked him the whole time, <laughs> Pat Downey style. That's you right, know I'm what I mean? He got in Gable's head. I don't head. think Owings was quite Pat Downey style. No, no, no. Look it up. <laughs> it was, it was, was, was I using more, psychological um, warfare and talking smack to him, and Gable was, like, try, that, that, almost thrown that, off by it. You know, it God, well, so, so you're saying if, if Larry Owings had Snapchat... Oh, yeah. Back in the day, oh, that's he'd be pulling Downey type of stuff? That's what Owings was known for. That's why he got in Gable's head. I Seriously, didn't know that. he, he I didn't talked know smack. That. He talked big smack, and people were like, "No one thought Gable was going to lose." And Owings talked smack the whole time. A documentary. Look at look at the Gable documentary. He talks about it. They talk about it. Owings talk crap. Seriously. Uh, what, well, what's you also so didn't do that. that. It's just, it's it's just, just funny. It's, you're so passionate right now. No, it's true. It. <laughs> because I like I like look into this stuff. I read a lot of like old wrestling history, and he okay. talked a lot of crap. Okay, and I don't okay. think that. I don't think that the best guys 20 years ago, even 15 years ago, were taking pictures with their highest competitors uh, and trying to look cool like these stupid kids today. On a, on a side <laughs> note, <laughs> kids these days, I tell you. On a side note, what would Larry Owings' Twitter handle be? 
Oh Thank my you. God! Oh, Dream Daddy. Crusher 2.0. <laughs> oh wait, that's taken. <laughs> Who's that? I think Benix already got that's that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Shout out to Lance Benix. Yeah. Yeah. Another iceberg guy. Yeah. Another yeah. gingered Augsburg guy that oh, fell from man. grace of the D1 long. I, I hope he has a good year this year. I hope he has a good year, too. I was supposed to yeah. train with him. I did a little bit, yeah. But I don't know. Well, I, I live I live three quarters of a mile from Totino. I actually saw him play Donnie, show him how to trim that beard. Show him how right? to. Show the young boys how to trim that beard. I'll get the ginger beard in shape. Get it going. All right. So who of anybody back in the day could win now? I don't know, man. It's all about, honestly, training, I think. Right, I honestly believe, could? like, genetics are the same. Training is a lot different. How much does technique play a part, though? Like, Huge part. Like, I'm going to say, like, I'm going to use Grace Simon's example. Like, 10 years. Like, you know, I'm going to use, I'm going to throw this back to ODU Maybe for a second. Maybe not, like, at the highest level, but the kids are definitely different. The kids' level is insane to me. Oh, like, so, like people people yeah. have their opinions of, of Steve Martin, you know, with the, uh, the ODU coach, the Granby, Granby School of Wrestling. Well, his dad, Billy Martin, you know, invented the, you know, the Granby, the Granby School of Wrestling. System, and all yeah, that. yeah. But the old man knew a lot of, about physical fitness, and S- Steve doesn't throw out um, – he doesn't really give credit unless he really believes somebody is that good. He goes, Gray Simons would throttle the 125-pounders today because he was that fast and that quick. And that's somebody uh, like, and that's somebody who was – the old man saw everything, he Coach Gray. Yep. And then Steve has coached this generation. He's coached, he coached Carl Perry in high school as an NCAA champion. Has, he's had numerous All-Americans uh, that went high school. And then you know half are All-Americans at Old Dominion are from when Steve was coaching. So the guy knows wrestling. We wrestled for yeah, Gable yeah. in Iowa. So when, when somebody like that says that Gray would be up there with the guys today, that's one name. It's like, okay. I'll take your word for it because you, you know a lot about wrestling. Saying, saying someone's up there, saying someone is like up at that level, nothing wrong with saying that. To say that this guy would be the guy, it's like, man, it's it like, is once a hard, you get, like it I said is before, hard, like, once you get to a certain level, it's like, who's going to win? It's like, I don't know. That's why they wrestle. That's to figure it out. Yeah. You know? Here's an example. I don't want to bring up bad blood or, or bad memories or anything, but take a guy like Robles, for example, who the first time you wrestle him, like, holy shh, you know, how do I wrestle this guy? That guy breaks those things. Okay, yeah, you, then you run into somebody like that just breaks the mold on how you wrestle somebody. So mm-hmm. that can also throw the argument out the window, yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to hurt my feelings talking about it. He's a good dude. Um, I mean, it's probably 10 years ago we wrestled. Probably longer than that. You know, wow, it's like, yeah. you got to move on with your life, you know? Yeah. Right, but I mean, the, the, the same time, you it's wrestled like, him a couple times, and they yeah. were vastly different each time. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely different. It's hard to prepare for someone like that, but... What did Brand say? It's not like we could saw a guy's leg off. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you prepare for a guy like Robles? It's not like we could saw a guy's leg off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was like, we had a kid he, he that signed up like for it, like but his parents got in the way. It's, 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 it's odd because someone like that, he was so strong, I'd have my arm out straight. Flex doing like you know completely extended. He grabbed my wrist and suck it in, and there's like nothing I could do about it. it Our backup like, no! 157 was gonna saw his leg off, but they, <laughs> his parents they wouldn't let us do it. I honestly, I did feel really, really, really prepared for him. I was ready, I had a good game plan going, um, and that didn't even make it to him. So it's like, well, you know what I mean? Like you gotta be an all around ready person. So I agree that any given day anybody can win. I'm just saying that. Take a leap. Who's who's impressed you most amongst everyone in wrestling from back in the day? That would it's do- hard when you throw me on the spot like this. Because I'm saying it's like, that like, I'm giving you about 20 minutes to I think know, of a name. We we're, we're only we're right, only Donnie, on you. We Donnie, haven't Donnie, 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 Keep in mind that I'm like the guy whose attention span lasts for about 10 seconds. And I keep one thing. bringing it back though. Who do you think? If anybody, <laughs> if anybody could, it's cool. We're man, saying, I'm bringing it back. We're <laughs> saying possibly if anybody could. You don't have to like live or die by they this. They have to be the old timer, right? Honestly, pre seventy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, how about this? How about this? Let's Ooh, simplify no, the question. I don't even know. Name, pre-70 a, name people. a guy that you would like to see compete today. Ooh, that's a Alan lot. Rice. Oh, Wade, Wade, yeah. Wade, Wade yeah. Chalice. I would like to see Wade Chalice. He was today. post seventy, though, right? He was. He was well, he, he, his first nationals was 70, 70, 70 yeah. He's he's on that fringe. He kind of was on the. I on think the other of him half is like it. a Dylan Ness type figure. He was a Dylan. I know. Ness, like, I've heard. He was a yeah. 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 He seems the, like an interesting legend. cat. I would, I've only seen the only footage I've seen of him really is actually in freestyle, so it's really hard to gauge. Yeah, yeah. Because 
you know, his stuff in, in you know. He wrestled all styles. The, even yeah. Sambo. I like yeah, that. He was I like a Sambo that. guy, yeah. So, I like he does that. the scientific wrestling stuff, so he's. I like guys who wrestle everything. I would have wrestled Greco this year if it was. Yeah. Hey, if it was possible, fix Final X. Let's let's make it so that we can <laughs> wrestle both styles. I would wrestle Greco. Why if, limit us? So I mean, could, so what's the, what's the what's the best case scenario on that? Um, what would be something that you think everybody would want to see that would make it possible for everybody to do everything? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I was at all three Final Xs. So Final Xs Final was, X was cool. cool. I, liked, it was cool. I, I was I was indifferent on the on the prospects of it. One. I'll say this from a staffing perspective: three straight weekends is kind of tough, just for your manpower. I yeah. agree, 100%. just for your manpower. The people that's, that actually have to run the event, that's kind of tough. Yeah, and you know what? It's I, I we, we were, I did a lot of uh, in Saturday morning, out Sunday morning kind of stuff, and that's not ideal, but it made it work. I mean, my family went with me to State College, so that was that's cool. Nice. But I would have part of me is like, yeah, I, we need to get some Greco in here. But once the Greco was actually out of the, out of the picture, a lot of other things came up. Like about, well, I don't want to have to sit through these women's matches. Shut up! Those some of those women's and Lincoln, really good, the women dude. saved the event. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay, Burroughs and Green were local, but like they in the Snyder. But like the the matches were kind of slow. I mean, there's nothing like okay other than Snyder getting you know doubled off the stage. That was cool. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't really a thing that was like okay. <laughs> Well, what's going to happen? Just, but it's always cool to see the, the, the women's stage. excitement. I mean, back of like Jakara Winchester, like she came out of freaking nowhere. Yeah. Like that was exciting. And then the fact that the Penn State fans stayed for the, the two women's matches after David Taylor was done was cool to me. And then the very last match at Lehigh was was Vicky in uh, 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 Whitney. Army. Yeah, Whitney. Whitney. So Connor, it was Connor. like yeah. Whitney Connor. And they stayed for that. She was great. So, she was cool. She was cool to watch. Even though was Greco was excluded from the final X, yeah. I thought it actually really helped women's wrestling. So, mm-hmm. and how, how you got to, I guess, pick I love your the interviews too. How much you're choosing to, because, you know, how long is that? I think the timing was like two and a half, three hours is about what you want to do. It's like a basketball game. Like. Yeah. Yeah. How do you fact, you know, Lindland, you know, you guys are Greco guys. I mean, what was the prevailing thought amongst the athletes? That's I think what I'm uh, Greco gets in the way of itself. I think Greco was all like, oh, freestyle doesn't care about us, so then we're going to be all butt hurt and <laughs> get in the way of promotion. I really do. I think that we have a separatist mindset. We want to be separate from freestyle, and it hurts us. I think that we got to join forces. But having saying that, I think that we need opportunity to be able to wrestle both styles. And how do you do that if you're part of Final X and you've got this, like, the same weights, for example? Greco I mean, Final X. Maybe have three Final, Final Xs X. one month apart, and you can have all three yeah. styles. Well, I guess, you know. Greco, Final X, all weights. You know, women, all men's, can, women all can mix women's, in between. All Greco. I don't know. Re- between our weights and freestyle weights. I mean, we've done that in plenty of competitions where we've snuck in women's matches in Greco days and freestyle days. Why not do that for Final X? Three different events. Greco heavy, I, early. Freestyle heavy, late. Women's freestyle in between both. Coming from a univer- Sorry. Coming from a university setting. It's like I see how much work goes into like, like the RTC thing, for example. You like, got coming in from like a university setting. I see like how much like our college. Okay, keep in mind like all the big RTCs are at big universities. All right, already. Where are your Greco RTCs? They're well, they're the Minnesota ones. Northern at, Michigan. You know, let's use RTCs in, in air uh, quotes here. Cornell, w- Williams Baptist. Yeah, Williams ba- the Baptist. The Army, with you know, Hill. Northern Michigan, and then, you know, the, the pockets that are training in, you know, I mean, provisors training at Penn Wait, State. we're not in pocket, uh, right? He's kind of... Uh, <laughs> oh, we are. We're the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I go down to practice, there's 20 guys yeah, down there. Yeah, Provisor yeah. and Manville are kind of, you know, The outliers of that. But, but why not? Why not do more things like that? But what I'm saying yeah. is, like, coming from a university setting is, like, the same people that are involved with the university, like our Brandon Agam, Luke Becker, you know, Trevor Branville, Dustin Slater... Um, they're very well involved with RTCs at their universities also. And then, like, keep in mind, like, those guys are gone every weekend in the fall recruiting. They're at tournaments. They're doing home visits in the summer and in the fall. And they're gone, like, every weekend from their families. And I almost feel sorry for them. I really do. And then the next thing I know is now there's three wrestling events. No. You know, it's three more wrestling events. It's like that's three more. It's like, dude, you could condense that into one. 
You know what I mean? I, I mean, mm-hmm. I get it. That's their so job. Saying one freestyle. That, that's their job. But you know what? These guys do ten times more work than here's the someone here's, like the Minnesota football or, or basketball coach Patino. But I think if you does, I think and, if you, and they're gone twice as much. And it's, I think if you compare that to like uh, people, and they get paid ten times in as other in other little. industries. The the highest if you want to be a high level wrestling coach. Well, look at the high level executives in any do? industry. Yes, I get that. You know, like, there's no sympathy for success. But I tell you what. There really isn't. There's, I, I, you know, there's I not. There's not. I don't, right. I don't care. I don't I'm going to give you a flip, that's flip a side decision. argument on that. Um, but I'm just, just saying, from the standpoint like, of, someone could make it work better, like, if you did. Definitely. Sorry. Definitely. I didn't yeah. get to finish my. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, I just. But, I, I mean, just, I think I think I love the idea that Final X is separate from the actual trial, so it's the final two people, because it's more real. Like, you could have the best guy in the world first round. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. And once you get to a certain level, you know, anyone can win, you know. So it's hey, I like, say we just do a national tournament for each style, and that'd be it. I agree. That's, Why not? That's, I like, that's agree. the format of world championships. And not even best side of two. Just, you just go through the tournament. Everything just like Russian so nationals. It's like just democratic in the U.S. The format, it's not the way the world championships In my go. opinion, Blind whatever the draw, f- yep. Russian one nationals. Tournament. Wait, what was it? Who's the guy? Was it Lebedev with the <laughs> – yeah, we yeah. don't want to go there. My it's opinion, my opinion, <laughs> my opinion is whatever. You don't have any diamonds. <laughs> I got two thoughts here. My opinion is whatever the format is of the world championships, I'm, as far as weigh-in, scoring, day, number of days in the tournament, two or one, whatever, yeah, whatever the format is, that should be your trials. But I do like the fact that the best, like the last, the finals, is separate. But we, here's the thing. The best two out of three. Because they got to weigh-in and wrestle two, two hours three later. Is like, that's it's, real. It's, that's, uh, that's, this is how I look at it is like tra- you know, track athletes, sprinters don't compete with long-distance guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then, best two out of three, everybody in the U.S. is like, oh, that's more fair, and the better guy wins. I agree. He's got I, more don't like that. I don't like that. But it's not true because you, you don't have to be better first in, match. You don't have to be better two out of three matches. you got to be better I mean, in one could, match. You could draw, like, Romanov, or you could draw, like, Ivory Coast. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I mean, I think, I think the reason, sure. you're, you're I think the reason right. why I've made teams is because of the two out of three format. But so like this isn't even like so you're, not benefit, biased. you're not biased. Not even benefiting me because I'm a very much give me three chances is better than give me one chance kind of guy, you know. But I think that it's uh so it's more fair. But is it our best chance at meddling? No, we get one chance at worlds. So my, now, my you know what I mean? It's like, like if you're that you good know, and like, you get pinned in a headlock, it's like you, you know, idiot, you got pinned in a headlock. So for me, <laughs> for example, know, you know? it's hard, it's easier for me to beat. Ben Provisor two out of three than it is for me to beat Ben Provisor one. It's easier for me. So like, but like, what's going to do better for us overseas? I need to win one match. I need to be able to win one match. I agree. So now we're talking about two different things. Right. Sorry. So, well, Sorry. this is where we start. Are you so, bringing it back home? Yeah, I'm bringing it back home. And because so Sorry Final X was 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 created. To promote wrestling, to make it more like a like a professional avenue. We're going to have more events. We're going to hopefully bring in more revenue, and hopefully it comes back to the athletes, right? Because that's one side of the story that the athletes are talking about. We need more opportunity to bring revenue to the athletes, and I totally agree with that to make this more sustainable so that we Did can— Did anything change? We can keep it going. I don't know. That's that's the big question. So that's why Final X is made. I mean, it's—and it's, then we're talking about— the best possible process to medal in the world championships. That's the other side of the coin, right? And then it's what we want to pick. I think they know? both work in favor with each other. Yeah, maybe, but I mean, you got three events where they're selling. I don't know how many tickets do they sell that. The 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 what total was the... attendance was better than Lincoln. Yeah, and slightly better than the World Cup. Okay, but remember, three different spots. What was yeah. the total attendance of the three spots? It Does was anyone... that sixty-six and change. I think it was twenty thousand. Somebody, I heard seventy thousand, yeah. but yeah. Think of was that, I don't know, right? was think it? of like the NCAA tournament. One yeah, session brings twenty people, twenty thousand. Right, but that's also one time a year for three days. That's what I'm saying. We and the problem with freestyling Greco and, and women's wrestling is there's not a. I think. Team. The, There's not the a team thing is, yeah. of people in don't. Rochester at the at the, uh, the the challenge tournament. It was the first time I'd ever seen a Minnesota SID, and and Trenton was up there. Why, you know, he was there covering the juniors and the senior level athletes. He even mentioned Hayden Zilmer didn't even go to the University of Minnesota. It was a Minnesota chance. Like that was galore. cool. Like that, that an S a sports and race director who has no, there's not a tie with freestyle and and the, his job. But I like that he was there. But also you had the Minnesota crowd rooting for the Storm guys. 
that is an anomaly because it was awesome. That's you cool. know, the Hawkeye Club, the Iowa fans are going to root for the Hawkeye Club, but they don't really care about Lauren Louise. They don't. She she wasn't a Hawkeye. Um, Thomas Gilman wrestles. Okay, he's done. They're going to go out. They're, they're leaving. Like it, you've got to have a. That's the NCAs is a bad example because you follow schools. They're are they going to go watch Zach Sanders? Or are they going to watch University of Minnesota? There's there's a distinct there's difference. A bigger, there's a bigger market right. to pull it's, from. Like, if you're wearing the maroon singlet, yeah. they're pulling for whoever's wearing the maroon for singlet. Sure, yeah. For sure, for sure. Whereas you're wearing a, a red singlet and it says Titan Mercury, and you're a Hawkeye. Well, eh, I mean, where's there's no natural draw to our yeah. clubs. So I think that's what hurts us internationally. And this is where I like find likes going to a smaller venue like Lehigh didn't even draw a thousand, but it was a very it was a cool. It was comp- cool. I Grace was- Hall is a, one of the best places to watch wrestling I've ever been. You're, to. It's very intimate. It's awesome. You're like on top it of the mat, awesome. wherever you're sitting. I think I mean, the club's got to do a better yeah. job of promoting themselves in their local communities. But there's a hard thing. It's like, well, Sam, it's like Ty Murphy's do, got what a hundred guys and they're in there in Southern yeah. California. And Somebody's got to step you know, up and do it. You know, yeah. the, I, think no, the, I agree. I think the storm agree. is probably anomaly because of how wrestling structure here. Because if you're on the youth. Your 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 USA car. You go to ju- yeah. you do it. Schoolboy duels. Your 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 single says storm. Minnesota has. You're a, a, a thirty five year old athlete, sure. or you're a fifteen year old athlete. You're it's you're saying storm. storm. So I think we've got it See, right here. That's but. the thing about like what I'm saying is if you had okay, maybe you do have final X, but maybe you have it one weekend and have it at some place like that draws a lot of people. Iowa. It's like you could get more than six thousand people there. Yeah. In one weekend. Iowa, anytime. You know what I'm saying? Typically, yeah. I mean, you know. like, how many people were at Olympic trials? Probably fifteen thousand. Yeah, Olympic trials is yeah. also an anomaly because I get that. But when Olympic if you trials made everything draw more easier, than how about World Team Trials and Council Bluffs with maybe a thousand people? No, back there was back more years. there than that, wasn't there? Oh eight, oh nine. It was. I was there. Bad. I, was there? I, yeah, it was a lot of people. I can't there. tell you. I mean, we've had an Olympian in Minnesota Storm every. Every Olympic since what 1960? 1968. 68. We've had a representative. That's what every the website time. says. I I go into so many. I mean, I go into a lot of restaurants and shops and MTC Store. They've, store. they've been com, hearing by about MTC, MTC Storm oh, for the first store. time no, because uh, I explain what I do because I get into conversations or whatever. And they said, "You got a flyer? People put like to follow it. Put it up in our follow you know, like put, put it up in our and window. And we got to so, do a know, better job. They don't job. like individuals." Can we give Minnesota some credit? This is a Minnesota podcast. Can Minnesota we like? Storm. Can we say thank you to listeners? Like why? This thank is you. this is why the storm is the anomaly. Hey, thank you, listeners. Thank you, Minnesota. <laughs> thank you, Minnesota Storm. You know, um, Minnesota Training Center. This Alan will also Rice, set up everybody. my very last topic. No, but um, I'm just saying that like we don't we don't have. I mean, we need to like designate somebody to do this, but there needs to be money to do so. Probably, but find somebody good to market. The lo- you know, the That's a hard club. thing. You can't you can't get something sustainable on favors, and I think the wrestling community is really good at running themselves on favors until you burn somebody out, and he's like, I can't do this anymore, you know. Um, but if we could find a way to create sustainable models where we could, you know, give somebody some money to be what, it's NSID also the value promote it and all that stuff, yeah. The value, like I'll, I'll give myself an example. I'll use myself an example. I, you know, my my announcing rate is. I, I give USA Wrestling a break because they could use that. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, I mean, I used yeah. to work for them, but like, you know, what what guys like Ken Berger and Brian Hazard and I charge for announcing wrestling for what we would get in other sports, like when we do road races and stuff, it's astronomically higher. Yeah. We can, you know, so part of it is we don't even know our own value of the people that are working our events. And then that means the athletes also don't get what they're worth. Green. Like, you know, the sponsorships, you know, how many times can we hit ASICs and Cliff Keen up for this and, yeah. and brute for like, yeah, sponsor us. Like, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what, you know, athlete PA, athlete performance solutions and Nike's going to do with us here. But like, we still lowball our value on everything, and that trickles down. Not, it's not just the athletes; it's the it's the tournament, it's the officials. Most of them aren't paid. Like, you know, we're still struggling to become yeah, like crazy. you know to professionalize our sport too. I think if we did a better job of actually targeting specific people or businesses, they would donate. You know, what I mean, like just coming from like Gopher Wrestling, like we, I mean, we're getting a new wrestling facility, and we're getting a new wrestling locker room and stuff. It's like. We didn't just say, hey, will people donate this? We went to specific people and like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. We could do a better job of being like specific about things and targeting people and stuff. I, you know, it's just like. We're also still hitting those same specific people just like we're hitting the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. getting yeah. older. Those same people are getting older or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's like. 
I'm not talking. Yeah, we're not even talking about straight philanthropy. You know, we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, because when you go to business create, people, how, how many, how many people value are, to make it a legitimate most, sponsorship? Most, most Overgrass is, is only going to lose so much money on wrestling. Yeah, yeah you know? most I mean? <laughs> most uh, wrestling funding is from pure benevolence. It's uh, rich guys who used to who wrestle, wrestle that care about yeah. wrestling. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, how do we actually make ourselves, you know, like something that could bring these people money well you it's know? like, like it's i know what you're saying people, people are going to invest in something that they don't look, know okay. yeah, I mean, it's like if you want to grow wrestling people you live in this grow. house right now five five and you guys consider yourself professional athletes i do yeah, i really five do guys in a house, definition yeah we get paid and you're professional athletes you absolutely are i'm committed to, to it just as much as any other professional athlete that's right exactly i'd say we put in more time energy focus than Less Most professional athletes. Yeah. This is not a pitch to donate to the Minnesota Storm, by the no, way. No, but however, <laughs> but it could be. If you go to mtcstorm.com, <laughs> you can find everybody's bios and donate to them. Hang on. Plug. <laughs> does that go to the club or does that go to us? Because I saw that and I saw donate to Zach and I haven't well, got a donation yet. Well, and it's been like law. five years. Well, no one's donating. I donated. Uh, I donated to Zach. But, uh, and I don't think it got to him. <laughs> <laughs> His bedroom's right below me. I think you can hear me when I walk loudly. I know. I text him. I'm like, Joe, I'm trying to sleep. Yeah, he can hear me. He, he's like, hey, keep it's not it down. not his levels, it's yours. <laughs> no, so mine, keep it bad. down. I said, I, I'm walking up here. And, and, uh, <laughs> I swear to God, he was cleaning, okay. his, he was cleaning his room at 2 in the morning. Yeah, and Sorry. Like dragging his dresser. I got high heels <laughs> on, and they're very loud. I just had to walk to my phone to donate to Zach Sanders. Did yeah. you get it? I didn't get it yet. No, you didn't get Son it. of a gun. Yeah, I don't just, know where that money goes. Just that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's off the books. Hey, buddy, you need to spend <laughs> more than me. Here's some of my this money. Is, this is a topic I think we definitely need to revisit, too, because uh, I... I don't know about you. I think I want. I think we need to do this more frequently. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot out there. A lot of good stuff to talk about. Oh, we we haven't even touched on like the out. second topic. I we was haven't thinking even talked about the really second anything. topic I really like quickly. About I want to know stuff. Be- better state better wrestling, wrestling, Illinois I mean. or Minnesota? Minnesota. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Dang, I have an, Illinois is good. I will. Not I have lie. an interesting perspective on this, but I do have something else that You're Minnesota has to offer. Me and Pat have talked about this. I'm unbiased. You go first. I'm unbiased. I have an interesting perspective. All right, I'm from Illinois. I've seen I've seen what like what the Oak Park program and well it no longer exists but over time and I, still, um, I actually dug out an overtime hat for my my uh, my wrestling hat a day collection. It was wouldn't quite to, make it the whole year. I could probably make it two months on wrestling hat a day. It was it was a place to be. It was the pinnacle of our generation. And then uh, you know Izzy style now, but I mean looking looking global. What, was it, what, what did uh, Medlin have? At Washington, was there any club associated there with that? It wasn't a title, really, but he was the head of I mean, Illinois he Greco. Some, he had some serious okay. kids come through, too. Yeah. At the high school level, who wins the most national titles at Fargo, Illinois? But globally, I think that right now, Minnesota is doing a better job than Illinois. We had Kirklevik take second at Cadet World. Kirkfleet, actually. Twice. <laughs> um, we had... Shilson just won a world yep, title. Today. Yep. But we did have an Illinois guy, Ramos, win the world title. Okay. Wicked but, step over. But, but I do think I do oh, think yeah, that, that in, I do think that Wizard Hippin. Hippin. Right? Wizard yeah. Hippin. I do think all in all, internationally, Minnesota takes the cake. But but domestically, Illinois does better. Developmental. I mean, you, you you've talk got, about like in the age but, group stuff. Yeah, age group. But yes. you know what? I think You're that about- I think that Minnesota guys going forward from high school. Do better than Illinois guys. This guy in Illinois could be the best in the world. And it's not in high school. And, not just Division and then it's like, what happened to that guy? You know, with the exception of like Kamal and Ellis and some of the other guys. I think that there's so many Illinois guys that are awesome as juniors and cadets. Then it's like, what the hell happened to this guy? I, but in Minnesota, there's so many people that like because the because what Minnesota is good for. It it uh is timeless. You know what I mean? It goes on and on. I think you, you think, know what I mean. I that's think what, you that's think what like think. that because you're from there. I mean, Minnesota still had studs that we haven't seen in a while. You know I, know, I mean, that they, haven't they, turned out. Still, or what? But I'm talking about it as a whole. Like, I think at really, the times really when did. I wrestled at like cadet and junior duels and the tough teams Illinois would bring was unbelievable. I was like, geez, dude, like I was like, but I'm saying about how many. What I love about I'm Illinois, saying how many of those guys are you still thinking about? Every they teach the, their you consistency know? of how they teach, like in Greco, for example. Every Illinois kid is going to get that first two-on-one tie right off the bat. Oh, yeah. And then it, you but, see a bunch of kids from, like, I mean, my home state of Virginia, you're like, 
they don't know how to. I mean, some of them, the good ones that listen to Coach Previous know how to clear a tie, but yeah. like you can't. They, once you you spend so much time trying to clear a two on one tie, well, you you already been dragged. You've already been thrown. You've been like you see a consistent style. It's very similar that is to Chandler style. Yeah, though. no, I, I really, think I think Illinois and Minnesota are very similar. Very similar. Like, That's super why the similar transition to Storm was from, very from, easy from for the me. schoolboys up that are very similar. I so. think a big Hence reason for like question. Minnesota Storm success is just like the developmental. Like it, like me and Pat, me and Pat grew up going to the same practices mm-hmm. since I, we can remember. Even like I remember going to J. Rob camps and yeah. Pat being there when we were little kids, and then I remember going to Gordy just Morgan. When you're all the same weight. But that's probably way bigger than Zach then. <laughs> but, but that's another rem- thing is I that, that there's to- an avenue. There's an avenue yeah. for senior level athletes in Minnesota. We get like for a- Illinois after high school, it's a, where do you go? Mm-hmm. I never met anybody that was an Olympian or a world team member from Illinois. I never met those guys. It was my generation where we really started benefiting from the Northern Michigan program because so many of them were from Illinois mm-hmm. and they're coming back to coach. But Minnesota for for we decades had, have had guys in their backyard that were Minnesota's was were, blessed to have a senior yeah, level program we have a very good, so, even like developmental so like maybe at the high school level yes but then going forward we didn't have those examples like like I was going to say is like that's that's a good point I guess you know it's we have a really good developmental program too I mean I'm just thinking like a lot of the guys who have had success in Greco at the senior level even I remember being there at kids' practices, Dan Chandler running the practices mm-hmm. and doing the same stuff they did then, they do now. Like, I wrestled Greco growing up, and I went to Wednesday night practice with Dan Chandler every Wednesday night in the spring. I drove two hours up from Wabashaw, did the practice, drove home. Because there's no, no... No, I didn't have partners outside the season. There is no, no easy <laughs> way. There's no direct way from Wabashaw to the cities. There Not just, really. There just isn't. <laughs> I mean, you can go, Highway 61. You can go 61 beautiful. or you can try to go 52. Beautiful ride, eh? Oh, yeah, it's pretty down oh, there. Oh, for sure, sure, yeah, you <laughs> betcha. Like, what I was saying is it like... It is actually a nice drive. <laughs> it really is. It's like you learn a very Lovely like fundamental, here. very good Love fundamental skill set from Dan Chandler or Gordy Morgan. And it's like I wrestled in the Greco Open last year. I didn't wrestle Greco in 10 years. I just thought of the stuff like Chandler showed us and I drilled a 100 times, you know, growing up. I, I, I should say a 1,000, 10,000 times growing up. I'm like, I'm just going to try and do two-on-one, underhook, arm drag. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, if I win, I win. If I don't, I'm like, I don't know I'm going to score points, but I can hand fight and hold position, and I learned a lot of that from him. Is that simple. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's a simple style of wrestling, but it's very high percentage, you know? And that's a good basic skill set to learn for any style of wrestling. Position's number one, no matter what style you're wrestling. Very true. I think uh, just building off of that, too, and, and Joe's point, um, we were – extremely lucky to have all those high level guys in our backyard. I mean, I remember those guys just being around or hearing their stories like that same J Rob camp. I remember, I remember listening to Garrett Lowney's speech and uh, hearing him talk about all the guys he wrestled in the Olympics and his adversity that he faced in the Olympics. Best five and, point throw ever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's Rush a cool thing. You, know, really that. you got to YouTube that. It's awesome. I mean, is it on YouTube? Yeah. I remember the, well, the there's Matt, like, there's the definitely the Matt. Com actually had like, every once in a while a, on there. What, GIF or GIF? What do you guys say? That's another hey, argument. GIF. GIF. That guy yeah. can yeah. run a hill GIF. sprint. GIF. GIF or whatever. But it seconds. was back the video before it was video. Before it was video, it was like a GIF of like Lowney throwing him for five and then Landing and then Allegedly. arms up yeah. like that was like the my like, on the buddy icon like on oh, yeah. instant messenger. Yeah. Rest Chandler, in peace. I love, I love Chandler's, Chandler's hair and mustache at that point. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. Chandler's hair and mustache. Yeah. To Lowney so and his, his reaction hair, to like, like, the the one or like one of those highlight him Olympic and Pat highlights. Marcy he had those throw back throws. in the day. I was like, Marcy, oh man, yeah. rocking something. That's throwing the hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's hard. But yeah, I think it's just important that those guys were around and that you know that continues to happen. I mean, that's what it, it's not a coincidence. You know, you see good wrestling in Pennsylvania because they got what is it, thirteen D one programs, eleven D one. There's a lot of D one programs in Pennsylvania. Is what I'm trying oh, to say. Give me a shot. I mean, it's a trickle oh, down effect. Look it up. Here's what's cool about Pennsylvania living living there for three years, all those guys go back and teach. Like exactly, at their high that's, yeah, that's like you've got all these people that go to NCAA, even the qualifiers. Yeah. Like you got all these cocky MRFers with slightly East Coast accents. Where well, you got the best wrestling in the world? And then, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, it's yeah, the, nothing but folk style. <laughs> I, I'm speaking out of my butt. That's but. true. But seriously. But to disprove that theory, you can buy the Matt Talk Online Fargo Guide. I am joking. MattTalkOnline.com slash Fargo Guide. We don't bring our best wrestlers at Fargo. Well, maybe you should start. 
Dude, they were tough when I was growing up, though. They always brought no, the toughest I know. guys. I'm I was, just kidding. Hold on, I gotta look this up. What was I? I'm what what was I gonna look up? Oh yeah, number of schools in Pennsylvania with yeah. wrestling. It's it was of, an example. No, I mean, it's a good example. Point. You know how many D ones are in Minnesota? One. One. That's the way we like it. Unless you're a hockey fan, then you got what? You got Mankato. <laughs> we don't want competition. At one point, so all good for everybody, man. At one point, we raised the level. Minnesota almost had all the national titles because of D3, Augsburg, well, D2, St. Cloud, and and Minnesota and at the time second. was one, ranked no, no. second. North Dakota State won the same year. So Augsburg, Minnesota, and North Dakota State all won, but like nine out of ten guys from North Dakota State were Minnesota guys. Mm. What, was the, what was the joke? Anymore. What was the best college football team in Minnesota that year? North Dakota State. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a joke. It actually happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It was like that was the thing. I, <laughs> I moved here. It was like, oh yeah, it was a, who's the best college football they, team they in Minnesota? Won't North Dakota that we State. Beat them, uh, like the year before that or something. Though. I mean, you're supposed to beat the FCS team. Yeah. Well, the way they hype it up, we're not supposed to. You know, it's like they're the whatever. Well, the time they had better coaching. NCAA D one double A champions. It's like. Okay, so why don't you join NCAA D1 football then, <laughs> you know? Mm, I don't know. Maybe I don't not. Know how that works. Did I go too far there? I don't know. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Shots fired. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Another back rider <laughs> shout-out. Attack, re-attack. Attack, re-attack. <laughs> attack, re-attack. <laughs> attack, re-attack. <laughs> I thought it was shot, re I hope my mic's know. been on. <laughs> Yes, yeah, your mic's like been on, Joe. Attack now. I never got my, my piece on that. We I just kind of decided. Been well, it was your topic, time. too. What you don't know is uh, uh, Pat was a ringer giving me well, uh, I was, I, I, topics was to discuss. I'm still looking up the ideas. numbers. I'm a brainstormer. All right, I'm looking up the numbers. Okay. Okay, there's 11 Division ones in Pennsylvania. Ah, okay. Well, there used job. to be 14, but, but wrestling. Well, East Stroudsburg moved to Division two. Millersville moved to Division two. Oh, so It's good so they survive, at least, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Bloomsburg, Bucknell, Clarion, Drexel, Edinburgh, Franklin Marshall. Hey, what did your dad wrestle for again? Would you let me finish... <laughs> Lehigh, Lockheed, like and Penn, Penn State, and Pitt. <laughs> I like to talk. Hey, I can't swear, but if I could, I'd say something to if Jason I... Bryant. <laughs> 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 We're in Minnesota. The mosquitoes are coming well, out. Your boys. dad wrestled yeah. for Morris University. What was it called? University of Minnesota Morris. Yeah, yeah that was actually a true time. story. The first school that had women's wrestling was Minnesota Morris. Mm. Shout out to the University of Minnesota. I'm pretty sure Morris. Egham's wife wrestled there. She did. Wait, wait, for a year or something. Wait, wait. I think I'm not sure. That's the... me and Katrina, Zach used right? to live in Egham's house. What's up, <laughs> Katrina Betts? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thought I knew that name. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> That's an awkward way, to bring, awkward way to bring up Brandon Egg's wife on the show. Oh, she's yeah. tough too. She could beat Egg'em in a. She, I saw her headlock Egg'em once. She definitely yeah. <laughs> head pinch. Head pinch, Brandon Egg'em. Sorry, Egg'em. I, I called you out there, buddy. On the next yeah. episode of Guilty Grapevine, we're going to talk to Brandon Egg'em about how he got headlocked, but no. Yeah, <laughs> or, or the story. David Taylor wrestled his wife like when they were ten at like really? a tournament, like really? a tournament of champions. Kendra, Jimmy Kennedy, Kennedy. yeah, Jimmy Kennedy's sister. That's funny. Oh, I bet Jimmy's she the won. Man. He's so funny. That's hilarious. Jimmy Kennedy. I didn't know she wrestled. I didn't either, and then she's from my state. Well, Are you, older you guys or were different weight classes, Joe. Definitely different weight classes. <laughs> like Jason <laughs> Bryant, I was, we're closer to the same weight class was, than you and her are. <laughs> I was, uh, I was one thirty five in in like. But Six you, you and I were both 215 pounders as seniors. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. Who 215. Won? Taylor or his wife? Oh, oh we know. His David wife. Won. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dave's dad his... showed me the picture back in. Oh, my God. Know, we that's hilarious. Bricktown, that's like 2013. Really yeah. I hope they use that at the wedding somehow, you know. Well, they did. They're married. Yeah. No, they used the picture. Like That's great. Oh, I'm sure they, they hung did. that up or something. I'm what sure song do you think was playing? Thunderstruck. Eye of the Tiger. Thunderstruck, of course. <laughs> One, you know, so every time I hear Eye of the Tiger, I'm like, wrestling tournament? Not, very not Rocky awkward, wrestling tournament. Very awkward workout session instead of a first dance. <laughs> the groom, the groom <laughs> and the bride's first workout. Right. First, <laughs> first, first, first drill. Do you think she tries to? Do you think she tries to tell Mike stuff like, "Hey, you should do now, this or that"? Now the father and the bride <laughs> okay, are going to yeah, work so, out yeah, together. I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> I think we're we're coming up on an hour and a half of this, and uh, we're yeah, we're going to keep it to be continued because this is uh, I like this uh, format. It's I, over for now. Already, <laughs> too bad. Uh, grab yourself some bug so spray and some beer on the way out. I was going to. I told Donnie to turn his mic off like half. Hour ago, but uh, a lot of, lot of good talking here. The woods. <laughs> We've, uh, we, I don't know if, we, if you've stuck stuck with us for this ninety minutes of wrestling discussion here on the Guilty Grapevine. I'd like to thank you for uh, for listening. Check us out and. Uh, as always, subscribe to the Guilty, the best value in Minnesota wrestling. You guys, all right, real quick, 
I haven't actually had anybody throw a plug for the guillotine for a while, but you three, not you, Joe, you three, Donnie, Eric, and Pat, grew up in Minnesota. I'm Zach. That's what I said, right? You said Eric. I said Eric? Okay. <laughs> hey, Eric. Donnie, Eric put that, uh, Donnie Eric, Eric's brother and Pat. <laughs> Donnie, Control Eric's yourself, brother Jason. and Pat <laughs> you said Eric. grew up reading the guillotine. Or, you know, yeah, yeah. At for least, sure. Uh, somebody actually, uh, Kirk Fleet City, and there was a magazine. Those rankings from my senior year of high school, I'll tell you what. Because he only knew the website. They used to print those. I grew up. I used to print those. Oh, yeah. I'd be like the first one up in my house, go figure. I'd be downstairs eating cereal, reading the guillotine every morning yeah. when I was a kid. The I read a lot of the guillotine. Oh, yeah. Me and my brother talked about it. I used to oh, you know, always looked at the rankings. I grew up calling it a guillotine. You guys, you guys pronounce We're Minnesota. The L. We're you Minnesota, though. Yeah. And the thing is, Jeff B, she's like, I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't it's, actually care it, what you call it. It is guillotine. It should be guillotine. But people say guillotine here because they're a bunch of hillbillies. Well, no, we're, they're not French. They're Swedes. <laughs> yeah. It's the word is guillotine. But the thing is, is guillotine so is The French lost everything. So. So. We're not Mexicans. We're that like, that's, my, uh, that's, that's French. French. It's oh, quesadilla. Yeah, quesadilla. Quesadilla. You've been watching way too much. Quesadilla is the same thing. Nobody said death by quesadilla. Quesadilla. <laughs> you know, the, the, yeah, um, the L is not pronounced that Napoleon's, way. Napoleon's, what was it? His grandma? Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His grandma? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back Come in on, 82. Guillotine. Eat your steak. In Minnesota, it's not the guillotine. Get some ham. But we had a little accent. You're so your dark. It's called Quesadilla. guillotine because you guys are all a bunch of uncultured hillbillies. It's all right. Do this is where we need to end the show. Say goodbye <laughs> to the people. Yeah, I'll call right, you Joe right, Ralph. I, I was to. trying to say what was it like to the guillotine. Is, this is, is we got correct. the guillotine. Joe Ralph. Joe right. Ralph. <laughs> call me what you will because you don't say guillotine right. All right, Yosef. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yosef Ralph. We're done. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Support wrestling in the land of 10,000 wrestlers by subscribing to The Guillotine. Nine issues a year for just $20, the best value in Minnesota wrestling. Subscribe at theguillotine.com slash subscribe. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.